In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to find the contact forces between blocks that are pushed together and accelerating along a flat surface. So the trick to solving one of these problems is to take a look at the system as a whole. So in this case, taking a look at a whole six kilogram system with the two and four together and analyze each of the blocks separately as well. So the first step we're going to do is, like I said, analyze this whole entire system as one big six kilogram system. And with analyzing our systems, we're going to have a few different forces, the force of gravity down, the normal force of the floor pushing up perpendicular to the surface, an applied force of 40 newtons, and the force of kinetic friction as it's sliding. So now we can go ahead and set up the sum of forces in the X and Y direction before we solve for some more values. All right, so I created a sum of forces formula or a net force formula for everything in the X direction horizontally and then everything in the Y direction vertically. The vertical part of it um, isn't quite as significant because we have no movement in the vertical direction. So this, the side that will have my mass times acceleration will have an acceleration of zero because there is no vertical movement or acceleration. So if Fn minus Fg equals zero, then Fn equals Fg, which we're gonna use in a little bit as we go further into the problem. Um, now for this setup over here, we're going to go ahead and plug in some more values. We know that the applied force is 40 newtons according to the problem. And then the force of kinetic friction is mu, the coefficient of kinetic friction, times the normal force. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. And the normal force is the same as the force of gravity, which is mg, mass, times 9.8. Okay, and that equals the mass times acceleration. But we're taking a look at the whole system. So the mass is six kilograms, and then we can find the A from there. So if we go ahead and take 40 minus the product of 0.2 times six times 9.8, we get 28.24 Newtons equals six times A, and then we divide both sides by six, and then we have our final acceleration, and that acceleration equals 4.71 meters per second squared. Okay, so now moving forward, um, we know the acceleration of the system and we know the acceleration of each of the individual blocks, which is 4.71 meters per second squared because the whole system and each of the individual pieces are all moving together. All right, now we're ready to take a look at each of the individual blocks. Um, we don't need the rest of the work. The main number that we need moving forward is the 4.71 meters per second squared of each of the individual blocks. So we're going to go ahead and draw the forces on each of these boxes and then go ahead and make the sum of the forces in the X and Y direction for each of those. Okay, so what I did is I drew the force diagram for all the forces acting on the two kilogram block and all the 
forces acting on the four kilogram block. So for the two kilogram block, we have that applied force of four newton of 40 newtons pushing it directly to the right. And we have two opposing forces, which are um, the normal force from the four kilogram block because it's bumping into the four kilogram block and also the force of kinetic friction by interacting with the irregularities of the ground. We have a normal force and the force of gravity, but just like looking at our first system, they're not very significant in analyzing each of the problems because there's not much movement going up and down, but we know Fn equals mg, same case over here. Now for our four kilogram block, we have the normal force from the two kilogram block because the two kilogram block is the thing that is directly pushing the four kilogram block, not that applied force. Okay, the applied force is pushing the two kilogram, which is making that cause the four kilogram block to be pushed afterwards. And then the four kilogram block is also receiving some kinetic friction because it's sliding on the surface. Now, the significant value that we got from before was the acceleration. So now when we set up the sum of forces in the X direction equal to M times A, we do have the A for each one of those, but we're gonna use a different mass because we're analyzing two different objects with two different masses. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers and then we should find a normal force for each one of those, which is that contact force. And those normal forces should be equal and opposite. So let's go ahead and calculate those mathematically and see if they do come out equal and opposite. All right, so we saw for our two normal force values, we had an applied force of 40, normal force is the contact force that we're looking for, and the force of kinetic friction just for the two kilogram black sliding is the mu value, 0 0.2, the coefficient of kinetic friction, times Fn, which is equal to Fg. So mass times 9.8 equals 9.42. Then we had 40 minus the normal force minus 3.92 equals 9.42 newtons. You would add the 3.92 to both sides, subtract the 40 from both sides, which would give you minus Fn4 equals negative 26.66, and then the negatives drop out. You get 26.66 newtons. For the second one, you have the normal force <clears throat> from the 2 kilogram block, and then same thing, subtracting mu times the normal force to get the coefficient of kinetic friction, except you want to use the mass of 4 for this one, and that equals the mass times that original acceleration that we got, which is 18.84. And then you're gonna add 7.84 to each side and then you get 26.68 Newtons, which is slightly higher than the first one, only because of some rounding that was done throughout the process. Um, other than that though, they're supposed to be the same exact values. They're just pointing in opposite directions for each of the blocks. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up one of these contact force problems. You definitely want to set up both objects in one large system so that you can solve for the acceleration. Once you get that acceleration, it's really helpful in plugging it in here and here to solve for whichever values you need to, especially that contact force. Remember, you can use either one of these to find your Fn and you should get the same exact value. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.